Well, hello to another session of cold water. This time we're doing about cold water storage systems. Okay, just to help all your engineers and apprentices out there, help you recap. Maybe you're going to do your water eggs course or your cold water exam at uh, college. So here goes. So this is a little a feed expansion system for heating system, but I've made a little bit of a display out of it. So here we go, your black system. So it's going to be on a base, it's going to be made out of plywood, not cheap board, and the whole area of the system base has to be supported. Because if it's not, it'll droop down and it'll warp. Okay? The, the system base should come out 150 mil on all edges. That's for maintenance purposes and just to help the system be supported should it expand. Okay? Underneath the system doesn't have to be insulated. So the heat loss from the dwelling on the property will rise up and prevent it from freezing. Okay? Above the system should be 350 mil clearance for maintenance purpose. So you could bend in, lean in and have a look and inspect the system, maybe change the ball valve. Okay? Um, the bottom corner here, we have a tank connector. Always make holes in cisterns using hole saws. That way you don't damage the actual cistern. Some old fashioned plumber tends to heat a bit of copper tube up so it's red hot and burn it through the cistern. The problem with that is you're damaging the plastic. You'll cause stress and the cistern might, might crack. Okay? The tank connector should be at least 25 mil up from the bottom. So any debris, there's the, there's the bottom of the cistern. So any debris will fall to the base of the cistern and not be drawn in through the distribution pipe to the cylinder or to a tap, damaging the seating or blocking it up. We've got plastic float. The plastic float is ideal for this. Should the system be in a situation where, of adverse conditions, where the, where the water content is going to be hot, you might want to consider putting a copper float in. Ball valves for systems should be to BS1212. Systems for drinking purposes or for storage for hot water or cold water should have a part two ball valve in. This is because of the air, large air gap. Okay. Filters should be inside overflow pipes. Okay. She's just here. Just here you have a breather vent as well. That's got an overflow screen in as well. So they both have screens in. So we do let air in, but however, we don't let insects or flies inside. Inside, we have an anti-draft tube. So the wind or the cold, should it go up the overflow pipe, the water inside the anti-draft tube will stop the flow of the cold breeze coming in and freezing the water. The cold feed supply to the hot water cylinder should be highest. So should the bore valve orifice block and the water should start draining down, the supply to the hot will run out first. So in that incident, someone's not going to get scolded. Systems should be black, or well are black, to prevent photosynthesis prevent bacteria growing inside. Due to the war regulations stating that a regulation 16 kit or bylaw 30 kit should be installed, you can now have drinking water from cisterns. This scenario has an air gap AFAG, which is basically the inlet diameter doubled for the air gap with the circular overflow. So AFAG is for the cold water storage system overflow. Okay, always fit the lid on systems because the lid actually strengthens the system. It keeps it more robust, keeps it to its shape more. Sometimes old fashioned circular systems, they used to split because they never had the sufficient strength or lid on it. Okay, right then, should this system have a capacity of greater than a thousand litres, it should actually have an overflow in addition to a warning pipe. Um, also, indirect systems 
where, say, the cold water supply would come in from the water main, the ferrule on the street, the communication pipe, supply this, and then this system supply all the cold water outlets, such as the cold feed to the cylinder or to bath taps. This system is quieter. Should there be an incident where the water is turned off, you will still have a small amount of water left in this. Okay, moving on, let's talk about some ball valves now. This is a part one ball valve. This is the Portsmouth type. And this has a piston mechanism inside. So as the arm moves up and down, the piston closes against the washer. These are not preferred because obviously the water exits at the bottom. So there's no real air gap there. If you do come across these, crank the union, clean the orifice or replace the orifice, replace the washer, clean the piston that's inside and always file around the split pin. That's a part one. Part two is what we have in the display unit here. That's brass, copper, the diaphragm in. So should you have an issue with these dripping, change it by undoing the union and check the fibre washer. Or if it's dripping, change the diaphragm washer or the orifice because sometimes the seating can crack. Part three ball valve. These can be bottom entry as well. These are for toilet systems. Um, the difference is this is plastic, can't handle much pressure. Again, same principle, diaphragm washer with an orifice for the seating. Part four is the equilibrium type where it uses the main pressure to shut off. You can't use these on low pressure systems. And two more for you folks. This is a scenario of two systems linked together. This is the correct insulation how it should be done. You've got the outlet on the furthest point to the bore valve. So should the water draw off, the water is going straight through the systems. So the water coming through the bore valve, travel through the pipes marrying them together and leave, preventing Legionella and stagnant water. In this instance, I've used two 28mm pipes to cause circulation of water. Isolation valve to the bore valve, you've got a base, that should be plywood, firm, supporting the whole area, clearance of 150mm around the edges. You've got the overflow pipe, which should be 25mm below the bore valve, 25mm above the water line. The overflow pipe, if you look, is in the same system as the bore valve. Okay. And one more drawing. This is a system, a thousand litres and more, 25mm above the water line to the lowest level of the overflow. Within 50mm to the highest point of the overflow and the warning pipe, they should be both be positioned. So the warning pipe, 25mm above the water line, going to fascia boards, soffits, going to a place where it'll be noticed. Where it won't exit anywhere dangerous, nothing where the water could freeze, slip, slip over and <coughs> fume of traffic. And then 25mm of the lowest point of the uh, warning pipe should be the beginning of the airflow pipe. Well that's it folks, hope you found it useful, please subscribe, any questions please email me, I don't mind answering any questions regarding your learning style, teaching methods, um, professional questions if you're in the industry, keep in touch, take care, thanks for your time.